James Webb Space Telescope has been launched successfully and now it is en route to Lagrange Point 2, also known as L2, as its final destination. L2 not only offers Earth shield from an incoming gradation from Sun to protect the sensitive instruments of Webb, but also this is a stable point which means any object placed on the Lagrange point will not change position with respect to Earth. James Webb is an infrared telescope which means it is designed specifically to study objects based on their heat signatures. With smart calibration of the onboard instruments that are present on Webb, you can change the infrared frequency that you want to observe. And accordingly, James Webb will be able to see either very old far off objects or nearby faint objects, which are otherwise not visible in the visible light spectrum. We will come to infrared telescopes and discuss a little bit more in detail, but do you know what are the different types of telescopes that are available? There are different types of telescopes available for those interested in exploring the night sky. Telescopes come in variety of designs, some of which have been around since the 1600s. Stick around till the end as we explore and provide more information about the variety of telescopes. The first type of telescope that was ever designed was a refractor designed by an eyeglass maker in the Netherlands in 1608. Soon after, Galileo improved on this refracting telescope design and applied to use it in astronomy. There are two main types of optical telescopes that are refracting telescopes and reflecting telescopes. There are many variations and hybrid designs for each. Let us start with the reflecting telescope. Since the invention of telescopes, astronomers have been able to see considerable amount when gazing into the vastness of space. This includes the details of surface of close objects like moon and planets and far off objects like galaxies. When a wave such as light passes from one medium to another at an angle, it changes directions. This is called refraction. A lens is a piece of glass designed to bend the light that passes through it in such a way that an image may be produced. A ref refracting telescope uses combination of lenses to produce an image of distant objects like stars or planets. A simple refracting telescope consists of two lenses, the objective and the eyepiece. Basically, the objective lens produces an image of a distance object at its focus and the eyepiece lens magnifies this image so that we can see it. We can represent this by using a ray, of, ray diagram which shows the path of imaginary light rays passing through the telescope. How does this device magnify? We can see that the distance between the lens is the sum of the focal length of the two lenses. The magnification of the telescope or any optical instrument is how much bigger the image is compared with the object. The magnification of the refracting telescope is equal to the focal length of the objective divided by the focal length of the eyepiece. Refracting type telescopes are good for beginners and not suitable for serious astronomy. Why? Because of the chromatic aberrations. What is chromatic aberration? This is a problem when we use lenses. Different wavelengths of light refract by different amounts. Smaller the wavelength, more refraction it will have. This is how a prism split light into visible spectrum. The result of this is that the edge of the image are blurred and colored like fuzzy rainbows. We can get special Lenses that have special coating to reduce the amount of chromatic aberration, but those are expensive. Because of these issues, most people upgrade to the next type of telescope known as reflecting telescope. 
A reflecting telescope is a telescope that uses a single or a combination of curved mirrors that reflect light and form an image. The reflecting telescope was invented in the 17th century by Sir Isaac Newton as an alternative to the refracting telescope, which at that time was a design that suffered from several chromatic aberrations. Although reflecting telescope produces other types of optical aberration, it is a design that allows very large diameter objectives. Almost all the major telescopes used in astronomy research are reflectors. Reflecting telescopes come in many designs, variations and may employ extra optical elements to improve the image quality or place the image in a mechanically advantageous position. From the time of Newton to the 1800s, the mirror itself was made of metal. This type included Newton's first designs and even the largest telescope of the 19th century. After the 19th century, a new method using a block of glass coated with very thin layer of silver began to become more popular by the turn of the century. Reflecting telescopes became extraordinarily popular for astronomy. The use of mirrors avoided chromatic aberration, but they produce other types of aberrations, which we will discuss in a bit. A curved mirror is a reflector telescope, basic optical element that creates an image at the focal plane. The distance from the mirror to the focal plane is called focal length. A film or a digital sensor may be located here to record an image or a secondary mirror may be added to modify the optical characteristics and redirect the light to film, digital sensor or an eyepiece for visual observation. Primary mirror in most modern telescope is composed of solid glass cylinder whose front surface has been grounded to spherical or parabolical shape. A thin layer of aluminum is vacuum deposited on the mirror forming a highly reflective first surface mirror. Some telescopes use primary mirror which are made differently. Molten glass is rotated to make its surface parabolic and is kept rotating while it cools and solidifies. The resulting mirror shape approximates a desired paraboloid shape that requires minimum grinding and polishing to reach the exact figures needed. Although reflecting type telescopes have revolutionized the astronomy and many discoveries are attributed to these telescopes, however, at this juncture, it must be mentioned that even reflecting telescopes produce optical errors. A reflecting telescope, just like any other optical system, do not produce perfect image. Because of the primary mirror focuses light to a common point in front of its own reflecting surface, almost all reflecting telescope designs have secondary mirror, a film holder or a detector near the focal point, partially obstructing the light from reaching the mirror, the primary mirror. Not only does this cause some reduction in the amount of light that system collects, it also causes a loss in the contrast of the image due to diffraction effects of obstruction as well as the diffraction spikes caused by most secondary support structure. Hubble telescope is a good example of reflecting type telescope. The advancement in reflecting type telescope has already reached its limit, but very far off objects as well as objects which do not produce visible light remain obscure from our view and therefore scientists use other types of telescopes like radio, microwave, infrared, ultraviolet, X-rays and gamma rays, which we will discuss next. Radio waves from space were first detected by engineer Carl Goethe Jansky in 1932 at Bell Telephone Laboratory in New Jersey using an antenna built to study radio receivers noise. The first purpose-built radio telescope was a 9-meter parabolic dish constructed by radio amateur Groot Rebel in his backyard in Illinois in 1937. The sky survey he performed 
is often considered the beginning of the field of radio astronomy. Radio telescope is a specialized antenna and a radio receiver used to detect radio waves from astronomical radio sources in the sky. Radio telescopes are main observing instrument used in radio astronomy which studies the radio frequency portion of the electromagnetic spectrum emitted by astronomical objects. Unlike optical telescopes, radio telescopes can be used in daytime as well as at night. Since astronomical radio sources such as planets, stars, nebulas and galaxies are very very far away, the radio waves coming from them are extremely weak. So radio telescopes require very large antennas to collect enough radio energy to study them. Radio telescopes are typically large parabolic antennas or dish similar to those employed in tracking communicating with satellites and space probe. They may be used singly or linked together electronically in an array. Radio telescope observatories and telescopes are preferentially located far from major city of population to avoid electromagnetic interference called EMI from radio, television, radar, motor vehicles, other man-made electronic devices. World largest filled aperture dish radio Telescope is 500 meters aperture spherical disk called FAST, completed in 2016 by China. World's second largest radio telescope was Arecibo radio telescope located in Puerto Rico, though it suffered a catastrophic collapse on December 1, 2020. Arecibo was the world's only radio telescope also capable of active radar imaging of nearby Earth object. All other telescopes are passive detection only. Ability of radio telescope to distinguish fine details in sky is called angular resolution that depends on the wavelength of the observation divided by the size of the antenna. Radio telescopes observe long wavelengths. So even when we divide our shortest radio wavelength by our largest antenna, we still have an angular resolution similar to that of an unaided eye observing the sky. To have the resolution comparable to optical telescope, a radio telescope antenna size needs to be much much larger. Humans finally cracked the conundrum by combining the views of group of antennas spread over large area to operate together as a one gigantic telescope. This innovation won Nobel Prize in Physics. You may be familiar with microwave images as they are used on TV weather news and you can also even use microwaves to cook your food. However, microwave radiation spans a range of wavelengths that can be produced by very cold astronomical sources or by warm sources like protoplanetary disk and clouds of interstellar molecules. Interestingly, microwave telescopes must be able to act somewhat like infrared telescope and somewhat like radio telescope. They therefore are built and operated using fascinating blend of technologies. Depending on the scientific goals, they can be put in space in high altitude balloons or on the ground at mountain tops observatories. Microwave space telescopes have primarily been used to measure the cosmological parameters from the cosmic microwave background. They also measure radiation, free emissions and spinning dust from galaxies as well as extra galactical compact sources and galaxy clusters. In 1965, using long L-band microwaves, scientists at Bell Labs made an incredible discovery quite by accident. They detected background noise using a special low noise antenna. The strange thing about this noise was that it was coming from every direction and did not seem to vary in intensity much at all. If the static were from something on our planet such as radio transmission from nearby airport control tower, it could come only from one direction, not everywhere. Bell Lab scientists soon realized that they had discovered the cosmic microwave background radiation. This radiation which fills the entire universe is clue to its beginning. 
otherwise known as Big Bang. Now let us move and talk about infrared telescopes. An infrared telescope is a telescope that uses infrared light to detect celestial bodies. Infrared light is one of the several types of radiation present in electromagnetic spectrum. All celestial objects with temperature above absolute zero emit some form of electromagnetic radiation including infrared emissions. There were several key developments that led to the invention of infrared telescopes. In 1800, the famous astronomer William Herschel discovered the infrared radiation itself. In 1878, Samuel Pierpoint Langley created the first bolometer. This was a very sensitive instrument that could electrically detect incredible small changes in temperature in the infrared spectrum. Thomas Edison used an alternative technology, his tessimeter, to measure the heat in the sun's corona during the solar eclipse of July 29, 1878. In 1950s, scientists used lead sulfide detectors to detect the infrared radiation from space. These detectors were cooled with liquid nitrogen. Between 1959 and 1961, Harold Johnson created near-infrared photometers which allowed scientists to measure thousands of stars. In 1961, Frank Lowe invented the first germanium bolometer. This invention, cooled by liquid helium, led the way for current infrared telescope development. Infrared telescopes may be ground-based, airborne or space telescopes. They contain an infrared camera with special solid state infrared detector which must be cooled to cryogenic temperatures. Ground based telescopes were the first to be used to observe the outer space in infrared. Their popularity increased in the mid 1960s. Ground based telescopes have limitations because the water vapor in the Earth's atmosphere absorbs the infrared radiation. Ground-based infrared telescopes tend to be placed on high altitude mountains and very dry climates to improve visibility. In 1960s, scientists used balloons to lift infrared telescopes to higher altitude. With balloons, they were able to reach up to 25 miles, roughly about 40 kilometers. In 1967, infrared telescopes were placed on rockets. These were the first airborne infrared telescopes. Since then, aircraft born infrared telescopes uh, like Kuiper Airborne Observatory, Kao, has been adapted to carry infrared telescope. A more recent airborne infrared telescope to reach the stratosphere was NASA Stratospheric Observatory for Infrared Astronomy, also known as SOFIA, in 2010. Placing infrared telescope in space completely eliminate the interference from the Earth atmosphere. One of the most significant infrared telescope projects was Infrared Astronomical Satellite IRAS that launched in that was launched in 18, uh, 1983. I beg your pardon. It revealed information about other galaxies as well as information about the center of the galaxy, our Milky Way. James Webb is an infrared telescope. Webb is very sensitive and versatile telescope that can peer deep into seeing very distant objects or very faint ones. Therefore, scientists can calibrate James Webb instruments to monitor intelligent life on some of the habitable planets in our galaxy or look at the Big Bang itself. We are all waiting for James Webb to get operational and some very exciting discoveries are awaited. Ultraviolet telescope used to examine the ultraviolet portion of the electromagnetic spectrum between the portion seen as visible light and the portion occupied by X-rays. Ultraviolet radiation has wavelength of about 400 nanometers on the visible light side and about 10 nanometers on the X-ray side. Just like all telescopes, ultraviolet telescope uses mirror to gather and focus radiation. In fact, the mirror placement and technology are extremely similar to that of an optical telescope. Unlike other telescopes, though, 
the mirror on ultraviolet telescopes are coated with special ultraviolet coating this material makes it possible for the mirror to reflect the ultraviolet lights ultraviolet telescopes also include detectors once the ultraviolet light is reflected from the coated mirror detectors can pinpoint the ultraviolet light Another difference between ultraviolet telescope and many other telescope is that they should be placed outside earth atmosphere. The reason for this is that the high energy UV photons cannot penetrate the earth atmosphere. As a result, the UV would never reach the telescopes if it, if they are placed on earth. Since ultraviolet telescopes are only effective outside earth atmosphere, they are only capable in space. Now let us talk about our last pick which is X-ray and gamma ray telescopes. An X-ray telescope or XRT is a telescope that is designed to observe remote objects in the X-ray spectrum. In order to get above the earth's atmosphere which is opaque to X-rays, X-ray telescope must be mounted on high altitude rockets, balloon or artificial satellites. The basic elements of tes telescopes are optics that collect the radiation entering the telescope and the detector on which the radiation is collected and measured. A variety of different designs and technologies have been used for these elements. Many of the existing telescopes on satellites are compound of multiple copies or variation of the detector telescope systems which sort of complement each other. Now let us move to the last type which is the Gamma Ray Space Telescope. Gamma Ray Telescope is designed to detect and resolve the gamma rays from sources outside Earth's atmosphere. Gamma rays are the shortest waves and therefore have the highest energy in the electromagnetic spectrum. Since gamma rays have so much energy, they pass through the mirror of a standard optical telescope. Instead, gamma rays are detected by the optical flashes they produce when interacting with a material in a specially designed instrument such as scintillation detectors. Earth's atmosphere block most gamma rays, so most gamma ray telescopes are carried on satellites and balloons. I hope you like the information provided in this video. If yes, then give us a thumbs up and hit the subscribe button. Bye for today and I will be seeing you again in the next one.